blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
will locate me. Wherever I am, God will locate me in my business. God will locate me in my home. God will locate me in every territory that I venture into this year, 2004. God said, you will be with me. And I will sing a new song. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory.
Chapter 9, verse 1 to 18. Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went on to the high priest. Underline the word breathing, threatening, and slaughter. He was not killing Nama Nama. He was slaughtering human beings. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Breathing, threatening from the slaughter of the saints of God. An evil murderer went to the high priest to ask for another letter to add to his act of atrocity if you think nigeria is in danger today you should have been alive when saul of tarsus was saul it was not a hidden thing he was getting official authorization the king and the high priest to slaughter people the word the bible uses slaughter that means to do damage to lives and kill them with no regard. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was slaughtering them. There's a place in Benin called Slaughterhouse. They are butcher. It's a place, any animal that goes there is bad by for the rest of his life. In the town where Saul of Tarsus lived, every Christian 
was faced with death unless God made them escape. But look at verse 2. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to synagogue, that if he found any of this, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Remember that evil does not know sex. Male or female. The Bible says here, we are due for slaughter. And anyone he has not killed on the way, he will bound them hand and feet and carry them to Jerusalem, tied, getting ready to be slaughtered. Verse 3. We are talking of life this morning, of a man. The lives of men in a man's hand. Verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, there shine ran about him a light from heaven. Somebody should shout for me. As he journeyed, as he journeyed, as he journeyed on the way to Damascus, there shined a light from heaven. For the rest of the year, light is coming to your house. And the Bible uses the word here, suddenly. Some of the most dramatic, inexplainable miracles that happen in a man's life happen not notified. And I believe that the next good thing to happen to you shall be sudden. I say shall be sudden. Something good is going to happen to you suddenly. Not on the way to Damascus, not on your way to slaughter, but as you look up to the author and finisher of your faith, something sudden is going to happen good for you. Verse 4, And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, So, So, Why persecutest thou me? Saul didn't know he was slaughtering men and persecuting God. Jesus didn't say, why are you killing me? Because you can't kill God. You are persecuting me, you are killing my people. What the word in Greek death, persecuting me, means putting a hindrance, an obstacle to the road my people are taking. And you are not giving power to do that. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Persecution is the disturbance to your peaceful life. That's what it stands for. Now listen to this. Jesus said, you told you we are doing it to my men. And you know that anytime anybody persecuted you, he was persecuting God. Some of you come from family, once you say you are a Christian. Oh God, I wish you know. Dr. Baze and Professor Hoya can tell you in this time, how many people we pay school fees for? Who were driven by their family. They just abandon them to us and say, you have entered Jesus. You are no more member of this family. When they were in religion, nobody persecuted them. When they found light, oh Lord. You greet somebody and say, you are in Hallelujah church. No. But you say, you are a Christian. You say, hey, yeah, but we are not like you. Because only we can say, oh Boni, you are wrong. Odd fellow, you are wrong. Freemason, you are wrong. The rest of them say, we are all one. How many of you know we are not one? Darkness and light, are they one? Sickness and health, are they one? Good and bad, are they one? Joy and sorrow, are they one? No! People say, we are all one. We are not all one. We are one in separate ways. We have one God. Verse 5. He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick your foot against the stones. And I look at me, everybody, with your eye of expectation of good things coming from God through me to you. Anybody who hits you from now is going to kick against the stone. And the Bible says you cannot do that and shout. Hosanna. You cannot knock your hand to a rock 
I say, I'm so glad I did. Anyone that tried to hit you from now shall have pain in their life. Actually, any eye that eye you too much for evil shall not have the joy of the day. Because they are not only eyeing you, they are eyeing the agent of God. And that's why you must do good so that people will not eye you too much. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. The difference between prosecution and persecution. When what you are doing is leading to why you are being persecuted, you are being prosecuted. But if you are not doing anything wrong, and people are just, for their own ill will sake, fighting you, they are kicking against the bricks. And God says that is very hard. I don't believe that if a thief is caught and beaten to death, is persecuted. I think he deserves his killing. Especially if he's an armed robber. As I said last time, any, any armed robber that will lay you must not will lay any other person. You didn't hear that. If anybody will lay you, that is the last time he will lay anybody. Because in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And we are giving power and authority to bind and to lose. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now my lesson starts from verse 5. Now verse 6 says that, and then he said, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Sit down. Are you ready now? Now fasten your seatbelt. Some of you think when you come to church that the person you are to listen to is a person who is a redundant nuisance. The church. Or some of you say, I don't want to offend anybody. I met them there. I've spent years telling my wife in the work of God there's seniority in the area of operation. But don't let anybody say, I came before all that. Bini has a parable that that fowl in Juju place is not going to eat sacrifice. I'm not going to allow other people to eat it. So many churches have been destroyed by old fowl. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. I'm a gift discoverer, me. That's why I've been able to train 10,164 pastors now in 107 nations. Once I catch you, that man, stand up. My DG, former DG, now a director of his own company. He used to sit down there near the window. His wife sits in the front, but he sits at the back. In the government, it's a director general two times, three times. A big man. But when he comes to the church, he just fold himself. He go to the back there. And he and I have been friends for 42 years. From 1954, we became friends. He would go and hide there. One day I say, come here. Make you stand here. You hear? Back is good, but come forward. Ah, you see? I, um, I say, yeah, I know. Just be sitting there. All right, from the back to the front, from the front to the stage. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If you find a gift in the house of God, don't let them sit down doing nothing. If people sit down doing nothing, they will sit down doing something. Nobody is a vacuum being. Everybody has something to do. The same thing, if you are in the church and this man is in the front. Let me use you for example. May God not let you be the type of example I'm saying. If he's in the front and he's not moving, don't queue behind him. They are what is called go slow on the road. If the person whose vehicle broke down is in your front, and you say until he moves, you are not going to move. You will not get to where you are going. So if you see a man who is not moving, First of all, go near him and say, How? The Lord bless you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Are you moving now? Okay. Now, 
How many of you also know there's what is called towing van? You can become a tower of the delayed. Saul of Tarsus said, Lord, number one, say, everybody say that. Who are you? Say that. Say it again. And the Bible said, the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus. Once he heard the word, Lawrence, I'm Jesus. The Bible said, Huh? Have I been persecuting you? He said, yes. Lord, say that to everybody. Lord. What wilt thou have me do? Saul was a doer. Saul was a doer. Look at his record. A journey man to Damascus, a slaughterer, a killer, and a letter collector for more killing. Now you are calling me to your ministry. Are you going to call me to put me on the floor? The Lord bless you, Professor. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. All of us rough, rubbing waste. Hallelujah. Sit down, Hallelujah. Busy, let's do here. Men who have no direction have no destiny. Never you ask any of my driver about that. Once we get to a go slow, I don't queue behind anybody. Because there are some vehicles that not only they don't go forward, they roll back. Maybe you have not seen that before. I've seen many people killed by the vehicle that roll back. And so once I look at somebody who's not moving, I say, driver, make a way. And thank God, I'm one of those that God favored using siren in this country. Once I siren, you're clear. You don't, you, don't, you don't delay me. You don't disturb me. You are not strong enough to be a hindrance to my forwardness. I move you from the road. You can use your own hand as a siren. Come on for a road, make a pass. The person in your front that you can shout on, get out! It will first of all be threatened. It's going to clear. Because not many people have the voice of get out. Everybody is kotoing. And I concur and koto people never make progress. Lord, what will you have me do? That is the job God wants us to do. Questioning him. Why we are we called? Some of you are in the church. As having to sit down. Nothing. You are not only a sitter, a doer of nothing. You can never grow when you are doing nothing. Who will you have me do? Let us see what Jesus told him. Because we are getting near the message now. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no man. Hearing the voice and seeing no man, they stood speechless. Ah. Do you understand that? The men that journeyed with him. Everybody give me your eye. That means we can be many and dummy. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. 
We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. during the week, verse 8 to 9. When you see and cannot see, I will discuss that with you during the week. So let's jump to verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. Somebody hear me. Who is God sending somebody to now? Please talk back to me. Minister, talk back to me. Women, talk back to me. Choir, talk to me. The congregation talk back to me. So, God is sending his prophet to the slaughter's house, to the murderer's house. God said, the man called Saul of Tarsus is now in the street called Straight. Oh, that God put you on a straight road. Some of you are in a bench street. Some of you are in a gully road. Saul went, immediately he rose up from the ground. He went to a street called Straight. It is better to start life straight if you are going to start new life. Gully, 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 gully. Men and women who are not loose always think everybody is bound. a house in the street called Straight, you will find a man called Saul of Tarsus. He prayed. Who has turned to prayer meeting? Saul. Three days, three nights, no food, no drink. Praying. Huh? No sight. Praying. That must be a serious prayer. And God said, go to his house. Read verse 11 with me. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the street which is called straight, and inquire in the house. Ask when you get there. For one called Saul of Tarsus, behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias as coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> he's not only praying already, he's already seeing vision. 
And who did he see? Ananias. If you are going to tell me that the light of God cannot change a man, you have not changed. He saw in the vision you are coming. Your job is to go to him now. Lay your hand on him and pray for him that he may receive his sight. Let's see the answer. Then Ananias, Obazir, come here, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. Religious spirit. Verse 13. I have heard of this man, of many things, how much evil he had done to thy sins at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Mama and I have a Bible study here. What we hear of other people. You see, it's a prophet telling God. God said, This man is already praying, this man is already seeing vision. Your job now is to go to his house, lay your hand on him that he may receive his sight. What did Ananias say here? I have heard so many evil things. God, you don't know where we are in this town. <laughs> the man you are sending me to, he has not changed. Actually, the last I heard of him was this morning. What he had been doing is to kill your own he thought he was going to impress God. God? Uh, now, let's illustrate this. Abazai. You are Ananias. I'm God. Tell me what you have heard. I've heard so many things, the evil things this man has done. Come on, uh, Pastor. And he even has authority now to come and kill people here. This man? Yes. When was the last time you heard of him? Well, it's not too long, sir. Not too long. No, because I heard, heard that he him. had a letter. Of he has a letter in his hand to go it. and kill more people. Yes. That belong to me. Yes. That's the last time you heard of him. That's true. And everything you heard there is evil. That's what you, you are just telling me. Yes. Now, of this man. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what you are saying that you heard. He may be pretending, sir. He is even pretending yeah, now. Yes. <laughs> now, all you have heard of him is all he did. Yes. All he did. And he has a letter of authority even now that he is here. He's not here for a, for a game. He has He's not here even for changed. Work. No. It's, it's the letter is still in his pocket. <laughs> yes. He, even, even though he's still praying now. He's just waiting for us to come and, so that he can trap us. That's what he's doing right now. Yes. So all that he's doing now is not the real thing. No. He's pretending. He's pretending. Sir. You are not sure he's safe. You don't know that man. He has not changed. We know him very well. He has not changed. No. He's still the same man you knew him to be before. That's true, sir. That's what you heard. Yes. And that's whom he is. Yes. All right. Now, can you listen to me, Ananias, my prophet? Listen to me, Ananias, my prophet. Man of God, holy man, soul winner, evangelism, your supreme task. <laughs> That's true. Even though I'm sending you to his house, he has not changed. He hasn't changed. And what is the motto of this ministry? Evangelism, your supreme, supreme task. task. Yes. And now you are winning soul by what you have heard. Uh, those that are ready to repent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, not this one, not this one. No, this man is a, is a criminal. <laughs> He's already a, a, a slaughterer. Oh God, it's a sorcerer, it's a slaughterer. Yes. He killed people. Yes. There's no hope for this one. Well, no, not this a one. miracle. Unless a miracle. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Um, I have a apostle, superior man of God. Three days ago, I met him on the way. 
He was carrying letter exactly as you have said. He was going to go and kill my people. But I now said to him, enough is enough. I struck him down. He fell flat. And I told him what he's going to suffer for my name. He has, he has now met with me. I discussed with him. And what I told you is that he's praying and he saw you in the vision. You come into his house to lay hand on his head. Are you willing to do that? Look at verse 14, whether you are willing to do that. Well. Now he has authority. That's what you know. Now that I know it's you saying it, I will go. Now, now look at verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias, this is not so now. Go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me. Oh God, prophet, apostle, the man you are reporting to me is a chosen vessel unto me. If he did have the record of the past evil life, he will not preach how good I am to his generation. Tell him, I'm telling you now, he has, he's going to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he will suffer for my name's sake. But Augusta, go to his house. And Ananias went, to his, went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, come on, read your Bible so know what to say. Brother Saul, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in thy way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it were it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. Amen. Ah, oh God, what of what you heard? The Lord has changed all that. Ah, he's no more the same person. No, he has new, changed. A new person. He has received the Holy Ghost. Yes. He has received his sight. Yes. It's not a chosen vessel. That's true. But uh, listen, oh, come, oh, come. I have heard. No, you know when you say to people. <laughs> Uh, uh, hmm. you, uh, <laughs> come. Pastor Catherine, come. Professor Hoya, come. We are in the Bible this morning. What we hear of people's past, for three days you can ask mama, we have been discussing one subject. Everybody is here to look for God before looking for man. That's it. That's it. What brought you here? Anybody who wants to be a prostitute, there's Mission Road. That's true. There's Ubagwe. Anybody who pay taxi coming to faith arena is looking for God first. Your job is not to look at what they wear. Look now whom they are. Are you hearing me? I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from 
all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. five days, less than one person's food for the last five days since I arrived. I have not eaten genuine food. My soul is in bitterness. We are not looking at people with the eye of God. We are looking at people I heard how many evil he has done. I heard how terrible this church is for former drunkards. This church, ask mama, when, we, when I nearly came from America, I organized the youth, Emmanuel Ekoragwa and the rest, to go to prostitute streets at Ubagwe. Bring them to church. You know who told me we cannot worship with those people? Elders. Ah, huh? You don't know that woman? Now, Ubagwe and I how did you know her? <laughs> I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. How did you know that prostitute if you were not her customer? They say we don't why we don't this morning mama and I discussed. I said to her, I said, look at all those people who showed us prostitutes and showed us thieves. They are no more in the Lord. The people they told me about that they were prostitutes, they were thieves. They are now elders and pastors. And those who pointed their sin to us, when they see that I travel, they come to her and say, tell your husband, the church is smelly. Those prostitutes. And do you know that about half of them joined Bartholomew in the choir, singing to the glory of God. And the wives of those who are sin discoverers, we're only having babies inactive useless the prostitutes the thieves of Bazaar involved with you and I at the birth of this ministry they were confessing everywhere I used to steal and no more a thief I was a hard lord Jesus met me I suffered from gloria Papa prayed for me Reverend lay hand on me and my gloria died I'm well now I'm going to follow Jesus all the days and the sin discoverer will say, eh, I hear. May God. Oh, one day we hope our reverend will change. Oh, no. We want hope. Church is bringing sinners in. Jesus said, I came for who? Sinners. I came not for the righteous, but to turn those in darkness to light. 
three days we have been discussing this scripture. Who is God looking for? A slaughterer of men. Look at the suddenness. Two mothers here. Look at the suddenness of the contact with Christ and the transformation. Saul prayed. Saul see it a vision. Saul is my chosen vessel. For everyone that God has an assignment for, they will give them duty first. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying. Everybody God has an assignment for, they will always give them duty first. Huh? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The only reason why many charismatic, holy ghost baptized, spirit filled churches are empty and the church that tolerates sinners are having first mass, second mass, third mass, fourth mass, fifth mass, is that the people there who are in the hem of our affairs says, we preach to you, God will save your soul. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, Obaze, Ananias, you heard so many evil. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, mm, I know. Father, the man you are sending me to now. And God said, go and meet him. He's your brother. Put your hand on him. He's going to suffer many things for me, for my name's sake. Go to him. Call him brother. Thank God for a man who heard from God. He went there. I said, brother, Saul. So, the Lord that appeared to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has also appeared to me. And has asked me to come to you. Lay hand on you. The scale of Brenner will go out. And the God of heaven will appear to you. My admonition to all of us this morning. See people. Whom God have seen. God met Saul on Damascus Road. Our judgmental spirit doesn't let us see. We are not even concerned on what has happened. We are only looking at their record of yesterday. Three days ago, Saul of Tarsus met Jesus on the way. Three days later, God says, my chosen vessel. Is praying and seeing vision. The people that have been in the church for 20 years have never prophesied. They are still saying, I heard. The word here is I heard, not I saw. I was told. That's what he said here. I was told how terrible. Question, how many of you came here to see God? All right, put your hand down. Be very serious now. This question is very tough. This very question is very, very tough. How many of you came to church to commit sin? Somebody is laughing at the back. <laughs> How many of you came here to commit sin? How many of you came here to serve God? If you came to serve God, stand to your feet. If we are going to go, we are going to forget how many cigarettes we saw in their hand yesterday. Nobody among them who smoked yesterday can smoke in the church now. And what they are hearing now with your prayer can help to change them tomorrow. Catch the fish before you wash it. Don't look for clean fish. All those fishes that are very clean, they are, that are on the surface of the water, they cannot come out of the water, out of the soup pot. Ariete, I am at do. The real big fish go to Porto Porto. They go down. They don't dance. When we are students, when we play ball and we have injury, we go to river, Ikoba. We put it like this for fish to come and eat it. The real big fish, they don't come out. They know when they come, they are in danger. If you are looking for a big fish, go to the bottom of the river. The small fish, not yet. As I alone. What here you will wawa, Eladia? Waro wawa, or we? Eh, no, saga. 
Era um o que vai me. I have chosen him. A vessel. I have chosen for three days. Mama have been hearing this from me every day. Let's look for chosen vessels who are still in where they ought not to be. And the Bible didn't say they should come to us. God said, go to his house. Go to Oloku's house. Go to Onomila house. Go to Awebe house. Go to that as a loom man house. Your brother, your sister who is serving his son, go. Don't wait for him to come to church. He's a chosen vessel. He's already busy doing something, even though what he's doing is wrong. He is doing it because you have not given him a new job to do. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Once they see light, they will no more go back to darkness. I reminded you this morning, 90% of those who started with us at Forestry and Iyaro, 90% that started this ministry with us, they are no more here. But they used to tell us, <laughs> one Morgan, but let me you remember Morgan. Huh? You were too, you're in the same house. Morgan will say, Alagba, ah, error out, ah. But God will say to me, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You are here this morning because a man who saw vessels heard the voice of God. God says, Saul have heard my voice. He has seen in a vision. He prayed. He prayed. He see a vision. He seen me. He heard my voice. I knock him down to pick him up. The same man you knew as a slaughterer. He going to suffer many things for my sake. I want us this morning to ask God. To give us a new heart and the eye to see the chosen vessels. The one we are ignoring. Whether you believe it or not, the attendance of last Sunday was not like this because I was not here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It wasn't like this. Persuading you to look for people, which the pastor is doing. Persuading you. To go for your brothers and sister, which is your job, is what has led us to where we are now. 123 branches holding service around Benin City right now of Church of God Mission. Let's go and tell sinners, Jesus is Lord. Look at verse 17. Oh, verse Let's read. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus. Oh, why are they shook me? The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee. If I were God, I would not appear as to a slaughterer. But I'm not God. But now that I'm God's agent of miracle, I see you the way God sees you. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Lord that appeared unto thee has said to me, has sent me that thou might here receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forth. And arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul, certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which call on his name in Jerusalem? 
And he that for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. Verse 23. And after that many days were filled, the Jews took cancer to kill him. But their laying away was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciple took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Did you hear what I'm saying, Lawrence and Hoya? Mama, did you hear what I'm saying? All the elders. Look at the job of the church. Saul was already at the pulpit in synagogue proclaiming Christ. You know who was judging him still? The disciples. Is it not that same man? Hey, the church has finished. Huh? The church, the church has finished. The church has finished. Teaching in Sunday school, the church has finished. Preaching the gospel, the church has finished. Singing in the choir, the church has finished. That drunkard, that harlot, that prostitute, that evil man, that killer of people. Oh! Jesus, where are you before your church dies? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Or as I look at Paul, a vibrant mudra now in the basket, see what he will suffer for me. No man would have been able to put Saul in the basket to lean him through the wall. But I'm glad to tell you, all that were waiting for him at the gate, they waited in vain. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Let us be tolerant. Let us bear with God. Because we don't know what he has done in people's lives. Let us bury our judgmental spirit. Let us overlook what we think, people. What we were told. That is the actual chapter that Mama and I studied. I heard of how many evils he has done. Not he is doing, but has done. Let's not judge by what they did. Let us see what we can do to help them out of what they have done. Join hand with somebody on your left and right. Father, we bless these workers first. That their labor will not be in vain in your house. Their effort will not be lost in your house. Honor them with your presence and your power and your glory. And now we are asking, Lord, that you put your mouth in the mouth of your children to become the mouthpiece of God. The Lord that gave manna to two million people in the wilderness. Still alive. The God that supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. He's still alive. Say hallelujah. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures, 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in, in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? 
we couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Unicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 1979. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. 
And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to believe. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, he lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James. You don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974, 75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, 
that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? What you with your boo? And he just stopped, brought his brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about 4 o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, wait till I talk! Again! Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? 
What is that I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine. And it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What did the girl name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father convinced my late Ben in the house. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in, uh, ordinary native daughter, tried they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He, said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another name died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> the 
child with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power, super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed. And he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. Inu mega tagi Jesu mego wesi. Inu mega ta. Inu mega jebe. Inu mega tagi Jesu mego wesi. Inu mega tagu wesi. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, 
Will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world 
with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as a black African he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985 he established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appear on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. 
He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry. Again, as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converting many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, my God is not a poor God. Your attitude determine your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Graham Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, 
and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed You. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again. I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to our bishop, Bensi Indahosa. The Lord bless you.